Oh man, it's hard to imagine I forgot this game existed. And it's only in the past year I kind of rediscovered it with new appreciation. And I find that really strange, you know. I went probably 20 years without playing this game and the last thing I remembered was Spectre had a Viper. Because of course I would remember that, right? I was 10 years old and would predictably gush over this car. Ooh, Viper! Viper! Oh my god, it's a Viper! <sighs> but since I'm a seasoned adult now, somewhat, I feel like this game deserves a critical examination, for better or worse. So I'm gonna do this, apropos of nothing. I was just so inspired by my rediscovery of this game. There's nothing in particular which would have me go to all this trouble. As it stands, Twist Metal 3 is one of my biggest letdowns as a kid. It's an unfortunate game that should have never been released as a Twisted Metal game, and probably did more damage to the series than anything else. I, 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 I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. This dude talks shit on the best iteration of the game. I'm gonna fucking destroy this motherfucker! <laughs> But unfortunately, things start to go downhill pretty quick after this. Like how Hammerhead is no longer a couple of insane hillbillies and is now replaced with this old grandma that just wants people to be quiet so she can watch her stories on TV. I don't know, man. It's actually pretty funny that one of the characters is a grandma. Of all people behind the wheel of a lifted Jeep, I like to imagine her daughter is an aging 1980s Barbie princess and Granny helped herself to the Jeep. You know, since her Buick was blown up. And that was a final straw. 989 decided to forego the more mature, violent nature of the first two games, and now everyone's given all the edge of a Saturday morning cartoon character. Oh my god, you came right off the cuff with this weak sauce criticism. Oh no, the characters aren't edgy anymore! How can I feel like a badass when the character I'm playing doesn't look like they sleep in a pile of used heroin needles and broken whiskey bottles? It fundamentally changes the nature of the game! Or this annoying raver guy who was instantly the worst character I had ever seen even back in 1998. Yeah, he is pretty annoying, but it makes sense if you end up having to play against him. Playing as him is fucking awesome. I'm gonna elucidate you on Club Kid and you will see. I'm gonna open your eyes, man. I'm gonna open your eyes in an existential revelation kind of way. The real pain with Twisted Metal 3 starts as soon as you're spawned into the first level. Yes, for whatever reason, 989 has decided to completely do away with the gameplay that made Twisted Metal 2 damn near perfect, damn near perfect, Damn near perfect. Damn near perfect? Damn near perfect? Look how stilted and wooden these are. And that's what I would expect from a game made even earlier than Critical Depth, which I actually like. And what's on display here is maddening at best and completely broken at worst. The vehicles are now supposed to have a weight and heft of them, allowing you to push cars around and even tumble over and turn upside down. That's the basic idea of it. Yeah, but it feels good because there's challenge. The physics engine is dynamic now. You have to plan your movements accordingly and even use them in a way which can get you out of trouble. I can grasp the complaint about the physics engine being too limber sometimes, especially when you end up overturned constantly. But once again, plan your movements. Speaking of motion sickness, the less said about the brand new first person camera perspective, the better. Ah, then don't use the camera! All you gotta do is say, ew, this camera sucks, let me switch it real quick. Duh! 989 Studios has also drastically reduced the amount of CPU cars on the stages as well. 989 does try to hide this by doing this annoying thing where it spawns in more enemies after you've seemingly cleared a level, but this just ends up making these boring stages go on for way too long. I think it helps. If you're playing the game for the first time and just survived a blunderfest, imagine the horror at finding that more opponents are coming to deliver a bludgeoning to you. If it's not your first time playing, there's a lingering sense of dread that not having your shit together by the time you finish off the first volley of opponents, like loading up on weapons and having enough health, you're in for some trouble. God damn it! God damn it! Stop it! Stop it already! Fuck! Motherfucker! The 3D engine sucks. So anytime there's too much stuff going on, which is most of the time, Twisted Metal 3 slows down all over the place. Yeah, I'll give you that one. The large, expansive levels of Twisted Metal 2 are long gone, and now replaced with basic, tiny arenas that can be driven around and explored in just a few seconds. Take Washington here as an example. If this was Twisted Metal 2, we'd be driving in a large, intricate maze of streets with all sorts of buildings and monuments to interact with. Mm, no. So what? It's the only level like that. It's the mall in Washington, D.C. The large, intricate maze of streets you're talking about is the London level. See? Other than that, the game has a pretty balanced variety of level sizes and characteristics. As you advance through them, you'll find the vehicle you have will either benefit or endanger you depending on what level you're playing. Also, if you're going to criticize the Washington level for being a flat rectangle, I can say the very same thing about the Holland level in TM2. Even something as basic as shooting other cars in a Twisted Metal game can be a pain in the ass. Twisted Metal 3 does seem to have an affinity for using weapons that fire off overhead instead of directly at enemy vehicles. Okay, so this rebuttal is kind of pedantic, but really there are only three overhead weapons, and two of them have homing capabilities. 
fire, power, speed, homing, remote, and ricochet, plus the freeze attack, and then the lightning bolt and the secret specials. Those three overhead weapons are the mortar, the napalm, and the rain. The rain is the only one without homing capabilities. With how hard it is just to line your car up to drive in a straight line, aiming any of these weapons accurately goes about as well as you can imagine. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, right, because an enemy is going to politely wait while you aim a missile at him. Who'd have thought a game known for vehicular combat would involve moving targets? Like I said earlier, most of the weapons have homing capabilities. It's not even critical for you to have superb aim for a missile to connect. And for having guaranteed close range accuracy, you can always freeze an enemy car first and then lay into them with a few power missiles or set up a remote bomb right next to them. Duh! One super shitty change that 989 did make was nerfing pretty much all of the supers for every car, with most only doing the same damage as what a standard power missile does, making them feel not so special anymore. Alright look, just like certain levels are favorable to certain cars, you can use your super weapons in certain scenarios. This is what we call strategy. And look at this! It's not a clean getaway, but I still get away. Eh? I really have no clue what happened to this game. Common sense probably points to an inexperienced developer, that's just a no-win situation for any game developer. Maybe 989 Studios genuinely wanted to try to make their own thing by putting in a whole new 3D and physics engine to try and make it stand out, and I could appreciate it. The speculation doesn't really improve your arguments. Next! 989 would at least get one more go at the series with Twisted Metal 4, which turned out to be a much better game on all accounts, but we'll save that for a future review. Alright, here's my real, real quick review of Twisted Metal 4. The same as Twisted Metal 3 with slightly better graphics and very large levels. So large it's almost like you're alone in them a lot of the time. The enemies are vaguely disinterested in fighting you, and most of the time you're left traversing the liminal environments in search for someone to shoot at and... What the fuck? What the fuck is that? What am I hearing right now? All that aside, there are even more levels in Twisted Metal 4. And they added new weapons. But uh, whatever, it's time for me to wrap this up. I don't know why you would have an affinity for this game over TM3. You complain about TM3 being laggy at times, but it feels like TM2 is laggy all the time because even driving around feels like there's not enough response or there's too much response. Like, look at this. Any movement you make seems like it falls into categories. Here, I unceremoniously gave up on trying to land a weapon on this guy. It's not predictable in such a way you can exploit it. Your complaint about aim being unreasonably difficult in Twisted Metal 3 is more applicable to Twisted Metal 2. In TM3, the challenge you face is not just waging an effective attack, it's being evasive. Like, what the fuck is going on right now? Why is this happening? No disrespect to you or Single Track, respectively, but I watched a review of Twisted Metal 2 and you basically worship this stupid fucking game. And you made one point about the handling being wonky or... Yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. Ultimately, I can boil down your complaints about Twisted Metal 3 being that it's too hard to control. What, you want it easy? Oh, I can't engage in vehicle combat from the safety and comfort of my exquisite recliner, hand-stitched by a single indentured orphan in Sri Lanka while partaking in gold flakes filet mignon and snorting the finest grade A Colombian from the teats of an escort girl through a pelican bone straw? How utterly ridiculous of you! <laughs> and hey, I get it. There are some games which I consider myself having mastery in, and then being disappointed when I play the sequel. God damn it, god damn it, what the fuck? But that's not on the game. That's on me. If you genuinely like this game more than TM2, then fine, I'm not gonna take that away from you. But don't deny the merits of a third game just because you suck at it. Twisted Metal is all about survival. But how can you survive if you can't adapt?